went down from the traditional post-surgery uh, dose of 60 gray over six weeks to 30 to 36 gray over two weeks. So patients had twice daily treatment, Monday through Friday for two weeks, and the total dose of radiation therapy that they received was about half the dose that patients would standard would get. Uh, this was given with a low dose chemotherapy that is pretty mild called docetaxel. Half of the patients were assigned to the traditional treatment, which is six weeks of radiation treatment with or without chemotherapy, depending upon what their risk factors were. And that's the standard of care outside of the trial. Or they were assigned to this two week half dose radiation treatment uh, that we had developed in our phase two trial. And like we recently reported, the phase three results were extremely promising um, from a, what we call local regional control, meaning no cancer coming back in a head and neck perspective. Uh, the, the treatments between standard of care and the reduced dose radiation was the same. When we look at overall survival, how people are living, how long they're living after the treatment, there was no difference in overall survival. And when we look at progression-free survival, which was um, patients not having cancer come back either in the head and neck or elsewhere inside the body, it looked to be similar as well. Uh, there was a big difference in toxicity, however. About one in three patients who had standard treatment had enough side effects from their treatment and weight loss during their treatment that they needed to have a feeding tube placed. And only about 1.6% of our patients who are on the reduced dose radiation arm needed to have a feeding tube placed. The rates of long-term side effects, such as dry mouth, stiff neck, problems with swallowing, was also, as you would expect, markedly better when you use half as much radiation treatment. So based upon that, the results of those two clinical trials at Mayo Clinic, um, if you have um, one of the minimally invasive surgeries, you have an HPV-related tumor, and you have uh, a tumor whose risk factors fit the criteria of our trials that we had before, we would now standardly offer you the option of having reduced dose radiation treatment. We know that there are some patients who after surgery probably don't need any radiation. So the best dose de-escalation is going from 60 to zero rather than 60 to 30. So we know some patients don't need radiation at all. Can we identify them using blood markers like circulating tumor DNA, for example? If you clear all your circulating tumor DNA after surgery, do you need radiation therapy at all? There's also some patients that we know don't do as well with the de-escalated treatment. On our phase three trial, there was one population of patients that did a lot worse. And that was patients who had a lot of lymph nodes inside their neck. And those are patients specifically, to talk jargon for a second, pathologic N2 patients, patients who had five or more lymph nodes found at the time of dissection. Those patients had more aggressive disease and did not do as well from de-escalated treatment. But is there a way that we can use these circulating blood markers again to parse out which one of those intermediate to higher risk patients can get the lower dose radiation and which ones need the standard six weeks of radiation. That's what our next generation of trials will be looking at, uh, looking at using biologic determinants inside the blood uh, from biomarkers from the tumor to figure out after surgery who doesn't need radiation, who can get low dose radiation, and who actually might need the six weeks of radiation plus chemotherapy. It was it always okay to have a half a dose that we just didn't know um, beforehand because we've been- It's very interesting. Head that's, and neck cancers. that's a fantastic question, Pamela, because um, how do we even come up with these doses that we need for cancer or not? They've been historically determined from, um, from clinical observations in an era where we did not have HPV-related cancers. So in an era when we had a lot of cancers because of smoking and drinking, these squamous cell carcinomas, we found out through generations of treatment that 70 graves, seven weeks worth of treatment were required to get rid of cancers that were centimeters in size. 60 gray of radiation was required to get rid of tumors that were millimeters, what we call subclinical residual disease. And around 50 gray is required to wipe out tumors 
that were nests of cells left over. So you have what we call gross disease, subclinical disease, and microscopic disease. It was well established that 70 gray was required for gross disease, 60 gray was required for subclinical disease, and 50 gray was required for microscopic disease. But all of these data came in an era when all these cancers were related to heavy smoking and heavy drinking. We, are, we had tantalizing glimpses that we could have done lower doses from a completely separate HPV-related cancer, which was anal cancer, which is also another cancer that's also related to the HPV virus. There was a treatment regimen that was actually initially developed by a surgeon that looked at 30 gray of radiation treatment, um, along with some higher dose chemotherapies, but 30 gray of radiation to treat intact anal cancer. And that was a fairly successful treatment. So the hypothesis that we came up with 10 years ago was if 30 gray plus chemotherapy was good enough for anal cancer that was intact, has not been removed by surgery, can we have 30 gray with a much gentler chemotherapy for HPV-related oral pharynx cancer if you only had cells left after surgery? So if you're a patient and you've been recently diagnosed and you are speaking with your radiation oncologist and your head and neck surgeon, are you, is it, is it, um, does it behoove you to ask about the radiation dose? You know, because it seems that people, ordinary people aren't going to know, first of all, what to ask for. They're just going to take whatever they're given. Um, yeah. But the fact that you could possibly take a lower dose and have fewer side effects down the road um, is a big, is a big plus. It's definitely something to talk to your radiation oncologist about when you see him or her. The challenge is the status of deintensification. That's what we call this reducing dose. The status of deintensification in the community is uh, somewhat controversial right now, I would say. Um, the gold standard for changing practice is a randomized trial like we did with our 60 gray versus 30 gray trial. And if you don't have surgery, there's an ongoing national trial from a group called NRG that is exploring this question. Uh, so it, it could be from a, if you don't receive surgery, uh, one of the answers your radiation oncologist might give you is that there's an ongoing national trial. Let's see what the results of that are. These trials were run at Mayo Clinic and they were randomized trials and phase three trials. We feel comfortable giving this as our standard treatment after surgery, but other institutions uh, may say that the surgery at Mayo Clinic is fairly unique. We have extremely specialized surgeons who do probably more of these types of surgeries than any other institution in the country. Uh, can these results be replicated outside of the Mayo Clinic? And uh, that's, that's a little bit of an open question, right? Vaccine uptake in the United States for HPV, particularly among boys, for which the HPV-associated oral pharynx cancer is the most prevalent population, it's pretty low. And furthermore, this is a cancer that takes decades to develop after infection, which means right now we are dealing with the consequences of infections two decades ago. And uh, that was in a pre-vaccination era. So we have decades of patients coming through before the vaccination era that will be uh, coming through the pipeline, so to speak. So unfortunately, I think this is something that we will be seeing for some time, but hopefully in the future, it will be something that uh, is eradicated because of vaccine.